Welcome to this week's edition of the Mike Bray Show. I'm your host, Tony Simeone, joined by the head basketball coach, Mike Bray. Coach, you're coming off a weekend where you got a split, really close game at Virginia Tech, and then you got the win against Howard in D.C. I'm just curious from your standpoint, how do the games go for you on the floor? Well, a hard-fought physical battle at Virginia Tech. Very proud of our group. We gave ourselves every chance to win, uh, but just couldn't finish down the stretch. And I think you have to give credit to Virginia Tech and their home crowd. You bust to D.C. And, and you get your energy back, and then you have an amazing atmosphere to be on an HBCU campus on MLK Day at Howard University. And we are thrilled that we escaped with the win, Tony. I wanted to ask about, we'll talk about the game in depth and how you guys did get out of there with the win, but you mentioned the environment, you mentioned the symbolism. We've talked about it really for the last month or so, how much you were anticipating being there. Did it live up to the expectations and what was your takeaway from the experience? Even more powerful than I thought. The educational experience for our student athletes to be representing themselves and Notre Dame on that day on that campus, uh, the responses that I've gotten from people in college basketball and around the country and, and our university leadership, just extremely powerful to be there. Uh, and it was a tough atmosphere, as you and I both know. The Howard crowd was there. The Howard team played great. Uh, I had every notion that it, we were going to have to escape. We weren't going to win easy there that day. So I'm thrilled we got the win. But the overall experience will last a lifetime, I think, for our young men. Coming up next, it's the Game Breakdown segment where we look back at all the men's basketball action. This is the Mike Bray Show presented by TireAct.com. For this week's Game Breakdown, we're going to talk first, Coach, about Virginia Tech. You guys were riding a six-game winning streak, playing some really good basketball when you went into Blacksburg. What was your mindset going into that game? Of course, a really tough environment, but a place you guys have had some success before in the past. Well, we knew we had a desperate team on our hands because they were searching for a league win, and they're a really good team, you know. Um, I loved how we got off to a good start, and we were in a very good offensive flow. I thought we were getting Paul Atkinson touches and playing off of him in the first half, and, and you figure you're in a pretty good rhythm, but I think you know that their physical defense is coming at you, and they have two frontline guys that are very hard to handle one-on-one, -on -one, and they kind of got to us then eventually. In the first half, you were talking about the success you had. You had a 40-32 to 32 lead at halftime. I thought the offense was working really well, maybe as well as it has in a first half this year. Your second halves have been a little bit better. You mentioned Paul. Dane Goodwin was working for you. What did you like from that first half offensively? Yeah, I think we just shared it and moved it and, and were able to move their defense around. Um, again, anytime I see 37, 38, 39, or 40 on the board at halftime, we feel like, hey, we're in a a pretty good offensive rhythm, but it was kind of by committee. Um, we were patient. I thought our shot selection was good. That's always going to be key for us. Sometimes our shot selection can get a little shaky. Mm -hmm. If we stay in, in character with shot selection, that always helps us. So Virginia Tech came out, they gave you a good punch in the second half. You probably knew it was coming, had to call some timeouts. What was your message as that game got a lot closer down the stretch in the second? You know, you're talking to your guys down the stretch like, you know, we weren't going to win this by 15, fellas. They're coming. Now, we have held people off before, and we have been in game situations maybe more than any other team in the ACC. So you're trying to tell your guys, we're going to have our opportunities, we're going to have our chances, and, and we did. You know, we missed a couple free throws, which is uncharacteristic yeah. for us because we're leading, the, I think, the league still in free throw percentage. Uh, but their big guys, one-on-one -on -one in the post, were hard to handle. We were afraid to overhelp because they could make threes, but they almost did both to us the last five minutes. You mentioned that, I was gonna ask, they shot 70% in the second half, and you guys have been really good defensively this year. I, I talked to Coach Solomon after the game. Part of this, did you have to just kind of tip your cap to Virginia Tech? You mentioned they were desperate, and they just came out and really executed in the second half against you guys. I thought like our home atmospheres have helped us and generated us to believe their home atmosphere really did, their student section and their defense it started with their defense. We had a hard time scoring. We weren't in anywhere near the offensive rhythm we were in the first half. And then they got going a little bit, and then they made some big shots. And, and you know, it's one of those where we had our chances, but you're going to have to probably steal it. Mm -hmm. 
uh, against a very gifted team who was desperate. We're going to talk about it a little bit later in Irish Intel, but one thing that really impressed me, you had the eight-point lead, and then they you know, came in through their punch, and you guys were down six with about three minutes left. You called the timeout. I thought you guys had three great possessions, two offensively and one defensively that got you right back in the game. I thought it still said a lot about this team, their fight late. They could have packed it in, and they didn't. You know, we've shown that. Of course, my touch, no foul probably didn't help any, it too <laughs> much, gonna, Tony. I wasn't going to bring it yeah, up. Yeah, <laughs> the timing of that was not great. I apologize to my team about okay. that. But we even weathered that. We talked about how we, and, and this team has weathered a lot down at Pittsburgh, Georgia Tech, especially on the road. We've weathered some tough stuff. And I figured we'd have a chance, and we really did. I, I love our group in that. We can take a punch in the under eight minute timeout and we figure out how to come back and make it game situations. Last thing I wanted to ask about the, the team's mentality. You mentioned some missed free throws late that was uncharacteristic. It's a great free throw shooting team, but I thought that their willingness to go to the line and draw the contact told me a lot. They were not shying away from those opportunities. Is that how you saw it as well? Yeah, I thought we had to drive it. We really were having a hard time making passes and then you just have to physically drive it. And we drew fouls, we got to the line, we just missed a couple. And you know, we made all of those against Howard two days later. <laughs> all right, we'll get a chance to talk about Howard after this and we come back on the Mike Bray Show presented by TireAct.com. It's time now to break down the Howard game, Coach. We were talking about it for really the entire season. It was such a game that was circled on the calendar. I want to know, you were in the locker room beforehand. We talked before this game. What was the message to the team before what was obviously a really unique opportunity? You know, I talked to them a little bit about the Father Hesburgh, Civil Rights Commission, Martin Luther King connection, taking the Civil Rights Commission to Land Lakes, our property up in Wisconsin, and getting the three Southerners and three Northerners on the Civil Rights Commission in fishing boats and taking them out of the lake and getting them to fish mm -hmm. and break the ice and talk. I, I told our guys that story. I think our guys were touched by the whole experience. We spent some time at, at the memorial. We had a great picture there. The moment was snowing, but we had a great Perfect. picture at the memorial. Um, I, I think it was, it's really, it was a touching experience for our players. And I know that because the parents of my players mm -hmm all texted me how powerful it was. It was a great environment. I'm curious from your standpoint, because it is unique, right? I, the PA guy was working a different way. The crowd is just a different energy. Uh, being on the sidelines, you guys wore those awesome shooting shirts too. I mean, it, it just feels like the kind of environment you guys will never forget being in. You know, it, it, the, we had a street ball announcer. He was rocking. <laughs> we got one of the best and you know, the no band or cheerleaders moves more athletically than the Howard yeah. cheerleaders and band. And uh, you know, the place was full. We we had a great, you know, DC has been a good town for us, but we don't play Georgetown or Maryland anymore. So our DC fan base was there and I certainly appreciate that, but it was rocking. Mm -hmm. And we knew uh, we were gonna have to escape and the Howard team, played to the energy in the building and we held them off. I was gonna say, once the game got started, it did seem like it was tricky to kind of flip the switch and get to basketball. And of course, Howard's playing this game that is so high profile for them. They're, they're rarely on that stage. You got their best punch and I thought it was a real testament to them that they never really let you guys uh, pull away from them at any point. They didn't, you know, I, we go down five in the second half, call timeout. And again, the, the character that this group has shown, they, they've come out of tough situations and we go on a heck of a run and we get it to 12, but you're not gonna escape. And I never thought we were, and here they come, and can you hold them off? And we made enough plays, even though we turned it over, had some bad turnovers against the press, that gym, because it was small, it felt like the court was small, and we couldn't get the ball across half court like you were playing against six guys. But we made enough plays to escape, and it was an amazing national story. The Again, the outreach I've got from coaches in the profession, thanks for doing that for college basketball. You know, it, was, it was powerful. I want to follow up on that, and we'll get into some of the, the nitty-gritty late in the game in a second. But the fact that you guys stepped out of conference in the middle of January to take on a team you normally wouldn't play, it's a scheduling, let's call it, it's a difficult schedule opportunity to put into the, to the bank at the end of the year. Just... What do you think it means for college basketball that you go do that? Wouldn't you like to see a few more teams maybe take chances like that around the country? Well, I, I'm certainly going to challenge some of my, uh, uh, you know, counterparts, but you know, where the message and the symbolism was great. I'm not sure the scheduling strategy was the smartest on my part. And I know uh, many guys in the business, when they turned it on Monday, said, what is he doing there on a Monday in the midst of league play? But it was the right thing to do. And I do think 
um, there'll be more of an effort by Power Fives to involve the HBCUs. I think that's really coming, and it's coming in football, too. Yeah, okay, so now let's talk second half. You mentioned come out of the timeout. You guys were down five, you had to use a timeout. It was Nate Leshesky who got you the couple baskets out of the timeout, really performed well for you all night long. What did you like from Nate in this game? Well, you know, we ended up playing one big guy, I, I think, because they were small and they were hard to guard and they were spreading us out and driving us. We got Paul out, not that he was playing bad, it was let's ride one big guy. And when Nate started to respond like that and kind of we played off of him, we rode him the rest of the half. And I, and I thought he just made big buckets and played like a senior in a tough situation saying, I'm going to will my group to get out of here with a win today. I thought Dane Goodwin did a, that too. And even Prentice, even though he had some turnovers, when it was crunch time, he made the layup to get us up three and escape. So our old guys, uh, Cormac, big free throws. He comes back and makes two after missing two at Virginia Tech. So our old guys, you know, kind of rallied. But Nate was fabulous. You led me to it there a little bit. I just wanted to ask about Prentice because, again, the game, it was hanging in the balance there. It's a one-point game late. He's had so many great plays this year. Of course, Pitt comes to mind first, but he took the big shot again against Howard. It seems like when the game's on the line, you're going to ride number three. He is, he is unafraid. And the one thing, you, you know, that, that I've learned about him, he could have three bad plays leading up mm -hmm. to the game-winning play, and he still thinks he's gonna make the game-winning play. His will to win is contagious with the rest of our group, and having him back in that mindset, which we didn't have early in the season, is very important for us the rest of the way. Last one for me is just, obviously you get the win, and you obviously needed that three-point win, but there's a part of me that thinks the fact this game came down to the wire makes it that much more memorable. It seems like the kind of game this group will talk about for the rest of their lives. It, it, it almost helped the broadcast that it was drama. Yeah. You know, it was a great story off the court, and then, you know, Fox, they're doing their post-game, their pre-game, national, everyone's watching. It had to go to the buzzer. It was almost in the cards. Now, I was thoroughly exhausted and, and you know, limped to the bus after the game, but uh, I kept checking the score, making sure we won, and then ran out of the gym. Thanks, Coach. When we come back, we'll have this week's installment of Irish Intel on the Mike Bray Show, presented by TireAct.com. It's now time for Irish Intel when we go inside the play. Coach, this is a baseline inbound set against Virginia Tech. I think really you guys this year have been outstanding on these. Talk me through the options here, what results in a Dane Goodwin three. You're right, Tony. We have scored on out-of-bounds under a bunch, but we come back to Dane Goodwin for a single-double screening action. Really good screen by Cormac Ryan. We execute and we get a bucket for Dane. And um, we have been really good out of bounds under, very efficient at, at finding ways to score. On this set, what I'm curious about too, you'll see when Trey sends it up top, I mean, Dane can come off this double to the right. Is that because they have to respect this that he can then go the opposite way and flare? Exactly. He's going to have a stagger. And we want, if you watch, we want Trey to be the first screener so the big guy may have to help mm. off, uh, if he uses it the other way. Dane read it great and Cormac set a very unselfish screen, and we delivered the ball for a big bucket. All right, Coach, this is late in the game against Virginia Tech. You call the timeout, you're down six. I thought the way your team responded here was fantastic. You get a great ATO and then a great stop as well. Really proud of our group because we're on the ropes. We come back and we want to post Paul on us out of sight, out of bounds. We go to him, he's one-on-one, -on -one, and when he's one-on-one, -on -one, we want him to look to score. Mm -hmm. And so we cut that thing to four, we come out, we, we did what we wanted to do. Then we go zone, and we do a great job in the zone of kind of getting a deflection and, you know, you know, we're in this thing, you know, we're in this thing. And it was really a good two possessions in a row, uh, you know, to kind of get things going. You know, Blake gets in here on a probe. Again, there's plenty of time. There's no panic. Ball screen by Paul. He rolls. Prentice with a drive, and then this is a pretty good finish by Nate Leshevsky. and now you're in a one-possession game with plenty of time. I just loved our poise coming out of that timeout down six to go right back into game situations. All right, Coach, this is late in the game against Howard. You guys lead by just one. There's a 4.6 second shot clock differential, so Howard's gonna press. I was curious to see if they're gonna foul. You knew they were gonna trap. You'd struggled with the press a couple times. Tell me how you guys broke this and ultimately got the basket. Well, this is the possession, because we had turned it over and we weren't very confident, but 
Prentice is good here. Trey in the game was a key. He was really good with the ball. Cormac's a receiver. We handle it here. We reverse it. We move it. And Hub is feeling time and score right here. He's kind of feeling time and score a little bit, and he knows eventually he's going to have to go. And they ha we have him spread, and that is just a big play by a senior. Now, we got to get back and defend on this last possession, and we do a good job of forcing a tough shot. Let me ask you this here. I, I see you holding your hands out, and, and Prentice goes, it looks like about, I think, 13 seconds on the shot clock. I actually thought this was almost really smart because sometimes I think teams wait too long. Yeah. They get too deep in the clock, and you don't get a good look. It seemed like Howard maybe thought, oh, he's going to wait five more seconds. He kind of caught them flat-footed, didn't he? Hey, I think he did, and, and Prentice really has a feel for this. Mm -hmm. He's been in these situations. That's a senior. They're worried about our shooters and Nate and Cormac and he just makes that's a winning play like he did at Pittsburgh and and you know right before that he had two or three turnovers and he shrugged them off and was mentally tough and figured out how to get a layup and, and at least give us a three-point lead right there that's your senior guard delivering when it's crunch time that does it for this week's edition of Irish Intel when we come back we'll have Irishography on the Mike Bray show presented by tireact.com So, Prentice, you guys have been playing really well over the last month and a half, really since the Kentucky game. Just from your standpoint, what's been working well for you guys? Uh, I think we've just been trusting one another a little bit more. Um, we got a lot of guys getting in the gym, um, just uh, honing in their skills. And I think that uh, when it, whenever we get in the gym like that, you, you grow that confidence and confidence in one another. You know, you have hit some huge shots this season. I think about the pit game, of course, late. You had a great performance. Then also just recently against Howard. What's been giving you the confidence to take over the game late when it's in, in crunch time? Uh, I think just my coaches and my teammates, uh, they, they give me the ball in certain times, and they, and they want me to be able to hit shots. And I think that me staying in the uh, gym with uh, Coach Tone and all the other coaches uh, just um, getting better. You know, you had your 500th assist in Blacksburg against Virginia Tech. To get the 500 assists is a huge accomplishment. You're now top 10 in the history of this program. What comes to mind when you think of those assists? How much did that mean to you to get to that platform? Uh, yeah, I didn't even really know that was, that was going to happen Like <laughs> at that time. I just, like, got on social media after the game and, and seen, low like, 500 assists. But uh, it, it really uh, shows how much work I put in and, um, and like, all the work that I, uh, I can do. You guys are coming off this game against Howard, and everyone I've talked to that was involved in it, I thought, said it was just an amazing experience. What did it mean for you? Obviously, it's a place that was close to your hometown, but, of course, to play in HBCU on Martin Luther King Day, what was the experience like for you? Uh, it was a great experience being able to get back to go home and play in front of my family and stuff. I don't really get to do that too often. And just being able to play on Martin Luther King Day, um, because, um, you know, Notre Dame is, is typically a, um, a private school, so, and we don't really get to play HBCUs that, that often, especially on a special day like that. So just going there and playing them in their home gym is, is really good. I want to go back to when you decided to come to Notre Dame. What went through your mind? What led you to this place? How did you decide to come to Notre Dame? Um, I just really like the environment, um, being able to have the good education and play basketball at the highest level, and just being able to trust in Coach Bray. Um, we had a great connection uh, from me coming up in high school, and I think that I, and I thought that I could trust him with my uh, with my basketball career, and that he could get me to the next level. Talk to me more about Coach Bray. What's it been like to play for him? What is what have you learned from him? What's the experience been like the last four years? Uh, it's been a really fun ride. Um, it has its ups and downs. Uh, but I think that he's a really good coach, and I think that me trust, me putting my trust in him when I was a 17, 18-year-old kid was, um, was a great decision I, I made because he helped me grow not just on the basketball court but in life too. I want to talk about off the floor. When you think about your experience in Notre Dame, what comes to mind as the stuff that you've really benefited from that's not basketball? What have you really learned from being at Notre Dame off the floor? Um, just uh, building your connections. Um, there are a lot of um, great people out there that aren't athletes, and uh, just getting to know the, the wide variety of people has uh, really helped me. And the last one I have for you is as you look to the rest of the season, now it's kind of a sprint down the ACC. What's going to be the biggest key for you guys to keep this thing going and get deep into the postseason? Uh, I think we just got to stay locked in and, and execute and execute our game plan. I think that at times we can get a little bit lackadaisical, and I think that if we can, able, if we can remain uh, – remain solid and just um, and play to our best ability, I think that we can go pretty far. Prentice, appreciate the time. Thanks. No problem. That does it for this week's Irishography. When we come back, we'll look ahead on The Mike Bray Show, presented by TireAct.com. 
It's now time to wrap up this week's edition of Inside Notre Dame Men's Basketball presented by TireRack.com. Coach, you've had a couple days now to rest. you got the break between Howard and Louisville coming up on the road, but now comes a really tough stretch. You're going on the road to the Yum Center, then you get three in a short period at home. Seems like a pivotal point in the season here at the end of January. What's the mindset? How do you get ready? Well, it's a great opportunity to make a move. This team has taken advantage of situations. I talk about them making a move in the league. And we're going to scale it to a three-day window, you know, through Saturday. And then we're going to look at, you know, more of the window through NC State. But it's coming at us fast. Um, playing on the road in the M Center is always tough. And, and they're athletic and are going to really guard us. And we're going to have to rebound the basketball. But to come back to our building for a couple with our fan base and how our student section is rocking, um, I'm looking forward to that too. Looking forward to it as well. That does it for this week's Mike Bray Show presented by TireAct.com.